Your Discord messages are probably up for sale. A website claims to be selling 4 billion Discord messages for as little as 10 cents. Also in your Hacking News Roundup, Telegram has a pretty serious, but also a pretty silly vulnerability, and iMessage got hacked, or did it? But first, Spy.pet is a website that probably has your Discord messages up for sale. The website claims to have scraped thousands of Discord servers, millions of users, and billions of messages, and they've made all this data searchable. Well, provided you're willing to pay for the privilege. And no, there's a good chance this site is not very legal, and Discord themselves aren't too happy with it, but more on that in a bit. Spy.pets is actually a very well put together website, and on the surface has the feel of something legitimate. Discover a fresh approach to find Discord users. Say goodbye to endless searches and hello to effortless discovery. They emphasize user privacy, which seems odd given exposing everyone's Discord messages is the exact opposite of privacy, and I've actually had to blur out this part of the webpage because every time you refresh, someone else's messages are exposed. So it's clear that this promise of enhanced user privacy only applies to spy pets paying customers. Speaking of which, creating an account is as simple as generating an account number, which actually feels very similar to Mulvad's approach. But unlike Mulvad, SpyPets only accepts cryptocurrency as payment. And I, of course, had to at least try this out, for research purposes of course, and bought $5 worth of credits in Monero. Whilst I was waiting for that transaction to process, I had a browse of the servers SpyPet is apparently tracking, and it very quickly became clear just how they're grabbing all this data. They simply have an army of bots disguised as real users, which join servers and then creep on messages you send within that specific server. So there's no vulnerability being exploited here, and importantly, your private messages are all completely unaffected. I searched a few users, and SpyPet returns a basic profile like the servers they're active on, and connected accounts. But more worryingly, it has a log of all the messages you've sent on servers that SpyPet has bots on, and this even includes a log of your activity in voice chat. However, if you have a small server with a few friends, those messages are very unlikely to be here. But messages you send on mid-size and larger servers are a different story. You could make the argument that none of this really matters. I mean, the traditional forums that Discord has replaced pretty much all have a searchable archive of some sort, but the difference here is that no one treats Discord messages like they'll be around permanently, so you get a lot of spicy conversations that few people would want to be made public. However, there is a link to request the removal of your data, but don't get your hopes up because that just redirects to a certain clip from Spider-Man. you serious? Spy.pet is only a few months old. It launched in November last year and has kind of gone under the radar, well, until a few days ago when an investigation by 404 Media put a spotlight on it, with it since getting a hell of a lot of attention. It's not clear who runs the site, all we know is that they're interested in making money and are even open to so-called enterprise customers. Interested in training an AI model with Discord messages? Are you a group of federal agents looking for a new source of intel or maybe something else? We've got you covered. So it's not hard to see why Discord itself isn't too happy with the site. They told 404 Media that they're investigating and will take steps to enforce their policies. Policies which are very clear that scraping data is certainly not allowed. But regardless of Discord's terms of service, not giving people a way to remove their data doesn't sound very GDPR friendly, and the fact that many Discord users are underage further complicates how their data is allowed to be processed. So yeah, this is potentially, well, almost certainly a legal nightmare for the owner of the site, who currently remains anonymous. And the site is already under attack for one reason or another, as on their blog, the owner has complained of having to deal with various DDoS attacks. Spy.pet is, in essence, a data broker. Data brokers are companies that scrape the web for your personal data before packaging it up and selling it on to, well, who knows. While Spy.pet might be doing this in legally questionable ways, there are thousands of legal data brokers out there selling your info to other companies, or in some cases just random individuals who are willing to stump up a couple dollars for a person search. And the kinds of information that data brokers hoard can be pretty scary. And whilst today's sponsor, Delete Me, can't get Spy.pet to bin your messages, they can definitely help you do something about the thousands of other companies trading in your data. And it works like this. You provide your data to Delete Me. After all, they need to know what they're looking for. Then they'll check hundreds of data brokers for your data and within just seven days, compile a personalized report on what they found. In my case, Delete Me searched over 1,000 listings, finding six data brokers who had 72 pieces of personally identifiable information on me. But the best part is, Delete Me sends removal requests on my behalf, so I don't even have to lift a finger. 
Taking care of your personal data is essential in today's world, and so Delete Me is giving you guys 20% off their eligible plans with my code Satonic. More details in the description. Telegram has had a spot of trouble. Last week, rumors began circulating of a zero-day vulnerability in Telegram's desktop app for Windows. A demonstration video shared on hacking forums shows someone clicking on some image they received only for their calculator app to open instead. If this video is genuine, things could be bad, very bad, because it implies that all hackers need to do in order to execute arbitrary code on your PC and thereby pwn your computer is simply trick you into clicking on what looks like an image. Telegram, however, disputed these claims, saying they can't confirm that such a vulnerability even exists and that this video is just likely a hoax. In fairness, it is quite common for these kind of bold claims to turn out to be false, as recently happened with viral news of a zero-day vulnerability in Signal. It was just totally false. And in this case, there were no technical details released alongside the video, so the claim of some awful vulnerability was widely dismissed. However, that all quickly changed. The vulnerability was confirmed to be true and the source of the problem was exposed. You see, when you receive a potentially dangerous file, like an EXE, as you'd expect, Telegram pops up all kinds of warnings of possible impending doom. This happens because, as we can see in Telegram source code, it keeps a list of dangerous file extensions. Here you'll find all the usual suspects like EXE, app, bat, and so on, but a simple typo in one of those extensions, pywz, which is meant to be pyzw, meant that files with this extension weren't being treated with the suspicion that they deserve. PyZW is a type of Python file, and without being on the naughty list, it means that they can be opened within Telegram just as easy as an image or video can. But it gets worse. Security researchers demonstrated how with Telegram bot trickery, these files can actually be disguised as innocuous files like videos, making it easy to trick someone into clicking on them. And this could have had pretty dramatic consequences, given just how Telegram is the messaging app of choice for many cyber criminals, hacktivists, and everything in between. The only catch here is that for a PyZW file to run on a victim computer, the computer needs to have the Python interpreter installed, which of course doesn't come on Windows by default. Thankfully, as soon as this bug was confirmed true, the typo was quickly fixed, and in the meantime, whilst everyone updates, a server-side patch changes the extension in real time so the files just won't run. But in a post, Telegram actually downplayed the bug, saying that less than 0.01% of our users have Python installed and use the relevant version of Telegram for desktop. But this statement in of itself opened a whole other can of worms. I mean, how did Telegram arrive at this figure? Does Telegram scan your computer for installed software? Likely not. I mean, realistically, they probably just made this number up. But regardless, there aren't any known instances of this bug actually being abused in the wild before it was patched. Speaking of bugs in messaging apps, iMessage has had its own drama this week when Trust Wallet tweeted of credible intel regarding a high-risk zero-day exploit targeting iMessage. This is the holy grail of exploits and is the kind of thing that a hacker could use to break into your phone simply by sending you an infected text message. Meanwhile, you'd have no idea that in the background an attacker could be tracking your location, grabbing your 2FA codes or stealing nudes. And it's no surprise that this warning came from a crypto wallet company. High net worth crypto hodlers need to be particularly wary of hacks like this because if they end up falling into the hands of cyber criminals, these guys are realistically some of the few people actually worth targeting with an exploit like this. Because, of course, every time a zero day is used, there's a chance Apple might discover and patch it. But when a 2FA code is the only thing standing in the way of a multi-million dollar payout, burning that zero day might actually make sense. News of this hack got millions of views and spread like wildfire. But how credible is this intel? Not very, it seems. This dark website is the source of the news, Code Breach Lab. They claim to be selling the iOS exploit that's caused all this drama for $2 million. They also have a WhatsApp exploit going for $1 million, with other exploits apparently coming soon. Not much is known about Code Breach Lab. The only reference to it I could find on the clearnet is some guy on Breach forums just asking if it's legit. And the site itself, in particular the About section, reeks of AI-generated nonsense. So it looks like Trust Wallet have created a bunch of drama over just some scam sites that we can realistically put in the same category as those Hitman for Hire darknet sites that exist only to scam the fools who believe them. This is no different. Finding vulnerabilities like this is actually really quite difficult. Advanced spyware companies often have hundreds of hackers on payroll in order to develop these exploits with any frequency at all. So for some unknown sites to claim to have a couple for sale and many others in the works is a bit of a stretch. 
The site is also very badly designed. If you tap on the iMessage exploit and actually try to buy it, the place order button doesn't work unless you have JavaScript enabled. So this is a very low tier scam site that is clearly not designed for the dark web, and there's a good chance it was just entirely made with ChatGPT or something. Unsurprisingly, no one has actually sent crypto to the scammer's Bitcoin address, with Trust Wallet seemingly being the only people who are tricked by the scam. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.